right? If it's this simple, why hasn't somebody else done this kind of thing? Right. It's like the Christman method, you know, when you talk yeah. about doing a two element with Christman method, and that's what I built the boards for those little two element yeah. boards. Yeah. Even that you, you can put an LC circuit in it to tune it, to get it even better with the, with the SWR. Right. You know? So, I mean, I've gone way down the rabbit hole now and now I'm, I realized how much I didn't know. Yeah. You know? So I know what I didn't know now. And, um, but it's not discouraging me. I mean, it just makes me want to learn more and I'm going to start playing with things. But for, for a whole part of this, for somebody who just wants to muck around with it and play with it, yeah, they can do it this way. And I'm, I'm going to release the, the, the phasing network. I mean, because there's no commercial value to it the way uh, it is. Right. Yeah. I'm going to yeah. release the three element design. So here, yeah. go play with this. Yeah, yeah, it's it's not perfect, but it'll work for you, and you'll get some gain out of it, right? If somebody yeah, wants, that's to, right. Yeah, to do it. Then when you start talking about a two element, you know, everybody knows how to build those two elements. It's just how do you make it simple for everybody to do it? Yeah. So, um, you know, it's again for me, it's gone. I've gone way down, in, and I've had to go back to school and learn a lot of the mathematics because the math is a little bit difficult. And I'm going to send you the the phase line calculator that I built oh, cool. um, in an Excel spreadsheet. I yeah. also found, um, so ON for UN's book had a CD in it, right? Oh uh, yeah, it did. Right. So there are some very valuable files on that CD. And yeah. I had a, I had a version, ah. I had a, a, a fourth edition of the book and it had the CD in it. And I gave it, I ordered a fifth edition and I gave it to a buddy of mine. Well, the new fifth edition doesn't come with the CD. Uh -huh. So I got a, I got to talk to the guy yesterday and said, Hey, can I borrow that CD for a couple of days? So I can pull a couple <laughs> files off of it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So uh, some of the stuff's going to work because it's Excel spreadsheets, but yeah. some of it is written and it won't run on anything, but an old XP machine. Yeah. So okay. I, hopefully the files I need are, Excel spreadsheets. Ex in yeah, yeah, just calculations. But I found a feed system for two element phased array, which gives you a simple method. Um, it tells you how long to cut the delay lines for either side. Yeah. Um, but it's not switchable. So the thing I'm after is there's a place where you have two feed lines coming in. And at some point in time, the voltage and magnitude of the current are the same or right. close to the same. And that's uh -huh. where you want to feed it. That's what Chrisman did. He said, "Oh, I it was, see. One line was eighty-four, and one line was one fifty-five. Yeah. And he found out at the eighty-four point, if he put the eighty-four, if he fed it at eighty-four degrees, that's seventy-one degrees that makes up the other for the difference for one fifty-five will allow you to switch it back and forth. So, so if you add the two, that's why he's got the 70 something and the 80. 71 and 284. So, oh, yeah. I see. Yep. So, but the key is you've got to feed that circuit where the voltage and, and the magnitude is about the same. Yeah. Now, supposedly on that. Otherwise, CD, it'll, yep. it'll go off. Yeah. Okay. Right. You don't get, it doesn't feed equally. Right. <laughs> so you're going to have a difference in, in, and it's going to play with your impedance overall, too. Okay. But they give Which you. Which is why it's so important to get this coax length cock yep. on then exactly so they have what they call you know you do you do when you set up your your elements for whatever array you're building right you tune one by itself with everything disconnected on the other one two three four whatever you're doing and then you tune the other one and you get those impedances and then you take an impedance with them both hooked up Okay, if you're doing two. So there's three measurements you have to take. And then you do a complex formula of adding and taking the square root of these things to get your drive impedance. And then that tells you how to feed the array. Okay. Mm. So I've I've got the other spreadsheet. I'll send that to you too. So you mm. can take a look at it and you know you can play with it if you want or not. Mm. But it's it's an interesting math problem. And you know, you talk about with your antenna and the 40 fold over. And you get that, you know, you get that mutual coupling there. Same thing happens when you have two elements, right? Yeah. If you take the ground, uh, if you disconnect one element and let it float, it really doesn't affect things. But the minute you put a ground to that thing, oh, I know. all of a sudden it becomes parasitic or it's in the system yeah. and you get all kinds of mutual coupling. So.
other than the um getting the coax lens right is there any mm -hmm. other pitfalls or or you just got to make sure that they're both presumably tuned at 7.23 or right. whatever yeah. right so again everything with these systems when you're doing it at basics is you want your impedances to match okay because that allows the current to divide properly if you look at you know kirchhoff's voltage laws and his current laws if you have a mismatch in impedance current's going to flow differently yeah so when it's going to want to go one way not the other right so if you set up two verticals get them as close to cock on you know impedance the same so okay if, you know and, and they're never going to be just perfect but you get them close no. enough uh -huh. um and then you know your feed lines the 84 degree feed lines you want those as close as they can be in your 71 degree feed line the yeah. other piece that people don't think about and i thought about it last night when i was working on my box <clears throat> excuse me my box for the two element is the distance from where you come out of the box that short distance from your relays also goes into yeah mathematics right yeah yeah whether you're using you know standard hookup wire or using a piece of coax yeah so you have to think about that now granted you know this much doesn't make that much difference but that much is going to make a huge difference yeah right? okay so yeah. when you're talking inches you know if you got an inch or two it's going to be okay yeah if you go out three or four inches different story so you yeah. want to keep those interconnects as short as they can be yeah um you know yeah okay so i mean it's uh, um, oh, i wonder what we were doing here um, <laughs> um <laughs> that's a mess that, that's, uh, that is a mess yeah yeah don't build that one uh ladies and gentlemen you get a hell of a right um but so as a reminder then we've got i mean the, to play with this basically you can have you can build two verticals Mm -hmm. You can just ground that one, mm -hmm. uh, just, just literally ground it. No coax at all, and you can put the coax to this one. Yep. And then you can make that one a little bit longer, effectively. I think I did a little video about this. Yep. You can make ago. it the same length. It's just not going to be as efficient. Yeah, yeah. But, but to start with, mm -hmm. you can do it this way, and then um, that becomes like the back of a Yagi. Mm-hmm. Okay, and then your signal goes that way, which is where I was getting the delay line problem. Okay, a phased array though is where we got coax going effectively to both of these. Mm -hmm. Forget the top now. Now these are both the same. Okay, and that's not necessarily the same length, but the same on the meter. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Yep, and you want your and, and ideally the impedance is the same, not just the tune. So build them as identical as you can, same amount of Literally. radials. Yeah, you know, as identical as you can get them, and tune the impedance so That's that it. they're as close as possible. Okay, so fine. And then, then, then Mr. Crisman, as we were talking about, where we we add up, we add up uh, seventy-one and eighty-four. Was it, John? Yes, yeah, seventy-one and eighty-four. Eighty-four on each of the feed lines, and seventy-one on the delay. 71 delay and 84 here so these are 84 i mean it's a bit weird saying 84 degrees long right mm -hmm. but they are and now we've got this very accurate 71 degrees mm -hmm. which we bolt in mm -hmm. to our box mm -hmm. and that could be switched either on that one on that one yep. so i see what you mean now and that's 71 so 71 to 7 to 14 15 80 I have uh, 155. 155. So we, oh, I see 84 and 155. And yep. that so that's where is that voltage is. Sweet in spot. Current. Yep. Yeah. And I, I, I actually had. And, and you're sorry, you saying the delay line means that this now goes in the towards the delay? Yes, exactly. Yeah. Your delayed element becomes your front element. Yeah. Okay. Fine. Yeah. So, I mean, people, do you use the expression Heath Robinson over there where something's just knocked together? Right, Robinson no, Crusoe. I haven't heard okay. that one. Yep. Okay. It's a bit of a Heath Robinson. I don't know where that, if you know where the expression Heath Robinson, and you'll be a British person, but no <laughs> doubt, then let me know. But it's a cobbled together, right, right, thing. You could cobble together this. It will still work, mm -hmm. right? 
uh, even if you go oh it's about there it just won't be as good as if you get your meter out and get your exact um cuts yeah. so that the and get the exact impedance and everything else so i've recently been running this as a parasitic array yeah parasitic is much I? easier <laughs> it's a hell of a lot easier the only reason you'd want it like this if you want to switch it yep. that way or that way and as it just so mm -hmm. happens that way is my important way, which is Newfoundland, New York, Florida, and then they're going into the the, the central uh, U.S. And you could you could also but also build behind that. me is just south of Egypt and the Indian Ocean. Yeah. Well, I can I can do that on a straight vertical anyway, so I'm not really interested in doing a uh, a switchable two element. Yeah. But yeah. you can you can also use the two element and make it broadside as well. So you, leave. you can. I think you get about three, uh, two, three dB. That it's not a lot. I mean, it's enough. No, no it 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 basically takes your donut and squeezes it a little bit, makes it egg shape. Just, yeah, so you that's get about, it. You get about a dB and a half. Is it a dB and a half? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. To the yeah. broad side of the antenna. So if you have these yeah. two here, it's going to be this yeah. way. Yeah, right? yeah. It looks uh, on the surface, unless you start querying it, it almost <laughs> looks like a vertical, but it's not. Right. It's um, egg shape. Get a little bit little egg. There we are. You get a little bit more gain that way and that way, and slightly mm -hmm. less. Yeah, what I was side. what I was looking for, and I still may go down the rabbit hole, is to look at the points where I can drive the antenna again and switch in 180 degrees of phasing. So at a quarter wave, when you go 180 degrees you get an, an figure eight pattern off the ends and it's, uh -huh. it's, it's not quite the gain you get off of going one direction. Yeah. But it's darn good. It's three and a half DB yeah, off yeah, of yeah. each end. Um, and you know, it's a little narrower pattern, but if you were saying okay. you wanted to listen to USA and the Indian ocean, yeah, put that thing into 180 degrees and oh, cool. figure eight. So that's I'm nice. working on that, trying to figure that out. And yeah. that's why I'm looking for the files I'm looking for. Now I understand. Yep. All right, a little bit more inspiration for you. John, well done, fella. Thank you.